we go. All right, guys, welcome to another video from XF Motorsports. This one is going to be about making this super cool carbon fiber double element rear wing. Uh, there's going to be a motor that mounts over here, and this top element moves uh, just like VRS on an F1 car, so it opens and closes. So uh, it's a pretty cool design, but Karen did act most of the work for making it, so <laughs> she's going to explain how we made it. Uh, so we started off with uh, foam molds to make the two wings, and then we filled them with foam, uh, foam core and there's also four aluminum inserts to help attach it to the supports. Yeah. The supports. Um, and then we made the end plates with aluminum molds. Yeah, it sounds a little confusing, but when you see the whole process, it will make more sense. It was quite a lot of work, actually, yeah, uh, making this one. But let's start off by showing you guys the design of the wing and uh, some of the CFD results behind it. And after that, we're gonna show you the process of making it and then uh, yeah, show you some of the cool features of it. So starting off by quickly showing you guys the design for the rear wing. So this first one we're actually making for a Lancer Evo uh, and the person actually wanted the wing to be bolted on the same places that the factory wing is bolted. That's why uh, these supports are so far apart. They're also top mounted supports. That is to help the aerodynamics so that um, nothing disturbs the airflow underneath the wing and it can stay attached all the way underneath the wing. Uh, the same reason why we added this knife edging at the back of the supports and uh, made them such a smooth shape so that, yeah, again, the airflow doesn't get disturbed underneath the wing. So this is how the profile of the wings look like. And this is something that I worked really hard on getting the shape and everything right so that um, the wings actually uh, perform better aerodynamically. Uh, so the numbers behind this wing are that it makes 400 kilograms of downforce at 200 kilometers per hour, which is a really high downforce wing. Of course, the wing needed to be made really strong to withstand these extremely high uh, levels of downforce. And this is the construction of the wing underneath once you take all that carbon fiber away. So basically there's these aluminum inserts that go underneath the carbon fiber so that um, the carbon fiber basically doesn't get um, too stressed at one point, so all the stresses are nicely divided on the carbon fiber. It's the same construction you see in Formula One rear wings and also front wings. They have billet aluminum underneath the carbon fiber for all the stress points. Here's a look at the simulation results behind the wings, uh, making sure that it's actually strong enough to withstand the downforce that um, it's going to be making. Um, I could have made the um, supports more efficient. I could have taken some weight out of here, but Again, drilling pockets and taking weight out of here would have disturbed the airflow underneath the wing. That's why we just left it a whole solid piece on this one. But um, of course, on later wings, that is going to be something that is completely customizable. We can't change these supports since they're a billet aluminum anyways and they're machined. So yeah, these are the results. Now let's get into actually making the wing. So for making the rear wing, we started off by making these molds um, that we cut in the CNC. They're foam molds. and. Um, I actually made a lot of failed attempts for making this one and eventually I just gave up on it. I've already thrown a few away and these are two of the ones that I still didn't make properly. And Finally I just um, gave up on it and um, thought that I should just let Karen do it and she's the one that came up with this way of doing it. Um, you want to explain? Oh. Yeah, so um, pretty much it was a simple fix. We're just using um, packing tape and it takes a little bit while but it's, it's a lot shorter overall anyways. Um, we just put tape along the whole thing and then we're going to be pouring um, the plaster and then using the uh, fiberglass to put to make it stronger and it actually releases way better like there's one over here that we did um, using this technique and it looks a hundred times better. <laughs> Yeah, so basically, well, just to walk you guys through the full process, so these are the CNC cut foam molds. Using this, we're making those molds that are made out of plaster and fiberglass at the back. And then using those molds, we're going to be making the final molds that are going to make the rear wing, um, which is then going to be made out of carbon fiber. So it's a bit of a long process, but it should give us hopefully really good results if we do everything properly. So let's start off by making the mold for this one, just like for that part, and then we'll be able to put these two parts together and hopefully make the lower element for the rear wing.
after a lot of work, here's a look at the final molds that we've made. And uh, next, we're gonna actually use these molds to make foam cores. That is, that it, uh, like, there's a foam core that is gonna go in the middle that is gonna form the core of the wing. And then we're gonna machine the what are they called? Aluminum inserts? <laughs> yeah, the aluminum inserts. <laughs> So we've run into a slight problem. Maybe more a, than slight. Yeah, as it turns out, all our pieces didn't really separate. So like, the way we had it programmed, the whole piece actually separated from the rest of it. We did get some pieces that were fine, but on the rest of them, the end mill didn't go deep enough and it didn't cut through them. And we were left with this thing that is like, we can't put it back in the machine because we didn't yeah. bolt all this individually. So now we need to go through the painful process of separating these individually. Of course, we're going to fix it for future ones, but for this one, it's, it's gonna not going to be easy yet. It's going to suck. Now I apologize after this point we did miss a few steps. Uh, we had to wrap the carbon fiber in vacuum bagging then put it back in the molds and uh, this part you actually see us peeling off the final uh, vacuum bagging. But for the next part, for the end plates, we did record everything from start to finish. So hopefully that will give you a better understanding of the whole process. So for making the end plates for the wing, I'm planning to go with clamshell molding. Basically there's going to be these two molds that I'm going to make on the CNC machine. They're aluminum molds and then uh, one fits on top of the other. There's going to be alignment dowels that are going to align them properly so that they're perfectly aligned. And then uh, basically when you torque all these bolts, it's going to squish all these layers of carbon fiber together and um, squeeze out any air or resin that um, is left in there. So basically it's going to give really nice results, even better than vacuum bagging because um, the clamping force is going to be much higher than you can get from vacuum bagging. Um, and inside this, for the core of this part, um, there's going to be an aluminum insert in there that is going to link all the bolting points together. Uh, but it's a really small aluminum insert so that it doesn't add any excess weight. It's just going to give the end plates the necessary strength they need because they are a pretty structural part of the wing so that the wing can actually withstand the extreme levels of downforce and the rest of the core is just going to be a foam core just like the wing so for this one i'm also going to cnc cut the foam cores in this shape so basically yeah this um, little cavity left in the center is where these aluminum parts are going to fit in and then they're going to go inside the molds and then these little tabs that are sticking out these are going to align everything in its proper place and also give me all the points where i need to drill the holes later for the um, bolting points to go and yeah, it probably all seems really confusing, but uh, let's actually get to work on making these molds and uh, see how it goes. So after loading the G-code in the machine, I've also put the uh, plate in place, the thing that I'm going to be actually cutting to make the mold or one side of the mold for the end plate. So I'm using this one, it's 6061 aluminum, and there's going to be four different tools required to cut it. So first I'm going to do a facing operation, then yeah, all the other tools. Here's a look at the, well, one side of the mold after it's done. So now what I need to do is I need to take this out. I need to put the other side of the mold in, which is basically going to be a mirror image of this one. And yeah, then we're going to be ready to use them. For making the end plates, Karen was away that day but luckily my friend Eva was over and she helped me out um, lay the carbon fiber and put all the pieces together.
The next day Karen was back though, so it was time to open up the molds and have a look at the results. After that it was just time to do a little bit of finishing up. The lower element did not turn out too amazing because that one was the first one we were doing and I guess we were still getting the hang of it. But everything after that, the upper element, the end plates, they turned out absolutely amazing. And after that it was time for Karen to prove the strength of her work. Once all the carbon fiber work was complete, it was back to the CNC machine for making the billet aluminum supports. Here's a look at all the pieces of the rear wing after they are made and uh, this means there's only one last thing left to do to put all the pieces together and so I think yeah the surface finish is pretty good. Uh, something on the elements I guess we can still improve on a little bit but the end plates look absolutely amazing. Yeah I'm pretty excited to put it together. Let's uh, bolt everything together and see how it looks. Here's a look at the wing after all the pieces are put together and it is looking really cool. So these are the adjustments on the side. Um, you just move the bolt over and then you can adjust the front up top element. But of course on this specific one, uh, the top element is going to move uh, with an electric motor that is going to go over here. So that's the next part that's left. This motor is supposed to go over here on these three holes like this. And then we need to make like a linkage that is going to come out of this motor and then it's going to go to the top element. Uh, so basically when you, you're going to control it like a DRS wing in an F1 car, which is going to be pretty cool. So uh, yeah, cannot even wait to finish up on this. It's looking really cool though. Just look at the finish on all these uh, um, wing mounts and then all the carbon fiber work and everything. It's looking really cool. Uh, the only bad thing about it is that it's not for my car right now, but I will definitely be making one for my car, really similar to this one. But yeah, let's finish up on this one first. So after that it was on to mounting the motor and the linkage. This was by the way a really similar setup to the one that I had on my E55 a while back. And of course it made a big difference in that car. I saw a 10 km per hour difference down the street um, when the wing used to be open versus when it was closed. This motor is waterproof by the way. Um, it's the same type of motor that I was using on my E55 and of course using it in the rain and everything. It's not really a problem. The motor always works. Here's a final look at the wing after everything is done on it and here's how the motor is mounted. This is what we've done for the wire. We've just um, fed it through the support and these are the little two things at the bottom that will actually mount to the trunk lid. Um, but yeah, for now, let's uh, actually show you guys how this thing moves. 
Sebastian is our little DRS button over here <laughs> connecting the wires but really this thing is going to be super easy to connect. One uh, wire is going to go to like a DRS button on the steering wheel that when you press the wing opens the other wire goes through the brake pedal so when you press that the wing closes so yeah it's really cool to see how everything works on this and everything but uh, before I was thinking of uh, making one for my car but without the DRS but now seeing how well it works and everything I really want to make this one. <laughs> So that's going to be everything for this wing. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to mount this one on a car because the customer is not in Canada. We're going to be shipping this one to him really soon. But uh, the next one we are making, um, that is for a C63, which is for a local customer here in Canada. So hopefully uh, for that one, I will be able to show you guys how it looks like on the actual car. Uh, but if you want to get this wing, it's already listed on the website. Uh, you will see the link down below. So that was everything for the rear wing. After that, we just had to package it and send it off to a customer who's hopefully going to be really happy with the result. But, uh, well, the next one we've already started work on, that one is for a C63. That, uh, for that one, that's a local customer here in Canada, so hopefully we're going to be able to mount it on the car, uh, take it to the racetrack, set it up properly so that it works on the car. And, well, the quality is also going to improve because for this one, the lower element looked a little rough because I guess that was the first one we were making, so we didn't really get the hang of the full process. So for that reason, I give the person a really good price on this first one but yeah from the next ones on I want to really improve the quality make them look just as nice as they will perform uh, so the wings are already listed on the website uh, the cool thing about these ones is that you can actually customize everything on them the width of the wing the location of the supports the height um, how you want the supports to look since we're making them in small quantities anyways uh, it doesn't really matter to us to actually uh, customize the wing so that it fits your car perfectly and uh, fits your needs perfectly. Also some other things that you guys are going to see on the channel really soon. This was an E55 that we manual swapped. We put a CD09 transmission in this car and uh, for the longest time I had the ECU sent out to someone who wanted to program it to manual and uh, to get the supercharger and everything else on the car running but we exchanged quite a few ECUs sending them back and forth which is why it took a long time but in the end nothing really worked. Uh, so that's why eventually I had to get the ECU programmed back to stock and uh, the stock issue actually came back in just two days ago so finally I have been able to get the supercharger working I found a way to make everything on the car working so um, I have been driving it with the supercharger and everything else on the car working and it feels absolutely amazing driving a manual E55 uh, making its proper power and uh, driving just like it should be driving <laughs> So hopefully really soon I'm going to be able to show you guys the results from this car and uh, right now I'm just working on a circuit so that everything that I did on this car the circuit does for me every time and um, basically keeps everything working. Uh, other than that you guys are also going to see a video on the F1 project that I know a lot of people have been asking for but uh, we're still on the design part designing the pistons and all these parts but uh, that is the part that takes the longest because um, it's something that we can't screw up on. It's uh, These are really expensive parts to make, billet pistons, a full dry sump system and uh, yeah we just got to make sure that everything will work before we make it. Uh, these are the piston rings that we're going to be using. All the parts are already in, all the material is already in so we've been uh, playing around with it seeing what cutting tools we need um, we have to actually make quite a few cutting tools for uh, cutting the piston ring grooves and everything so it's quite a complex thing making a piston um, so that's why yeah it's uh, still gonna take a little longer but once the parts are made putting it back together will not take long at all it's just a matter of two or three days putting the engine back together um, it's just the designing part calculating part that takes the most time but of course that is the most important part because if that's not done right nothing at all after that point is gonna work so yeah, soon enough you guys are going to see some cool parts being made for this engine. Uh, but yeah, that's everything for now. Quite a few cool things coming up, so definitely stay tuned. And I uh, will see you guys in the next one.